more Americans are dying because of drugs than ever before. We've never seen anything like this. 2016 saw 64,000 uh, Americans die of drug overdoses. One every nine minutes. 2018, this year, we want it down. Well, that was Attorney General Jeff Sessions today addressing what he called the deadliest drug crisis in our nation's history. And what's, and what's more than uh, more, over the last five years, the number of foster children nationwide has risen by 8 percent, a rise that public health officials attribute to the rippling effects of this worsening opioid crisis. Here now to discuss Jeremy Kohomban, uh, President and CEO of the Children's Village, along with Troy Quast, uh, Associate Professor at the University of South Florida College of Public Health. Gentlemen, thanks for joining. Jeremy, let me start with you. The Children's Village, uh, there was a piece in the Brookings Institute I saw. I was shocked at the number 500,000 sort of rang out to me. This, of course, after wa witnessing the story of Baby Hope during the state, state of the Union. Right. What's being done to address this? I think there's a, there are a lot of plans, but very little has really happened. One of the things that we know is that we are taking kids away from families, but we don't have enough families to take them in. So, and that's a real crisis, and we need to do more to make sure that when we take kids away that we give them a family, because certainly we don't want kids growing up in institutions like Children's Village. But by the same token, though, I mean, by the time these kids are taken away, uh, it's, it's, I guess it's de determined that these parents are beyond rehabilitation. I think uh, the choice to take away is one that's often done very thoughtfully and carefully. Um, and it doesn't mean they're beyond rehabilitation. It simply means that they probably need treatment. But families often have extended families, aunties, aunts, uncles, and sure. we certainly need more foster parents. Sure. You know, uh, Troy, there's been a serious push uh, to fund uh, help in all areas of this crisis. Uh, we saw uh, during the uh, final moments of the tax bill where there was extra money put in and we heard today that perhaps the Senate will find billions of additional dollars. How is that distributed and, and, and will that have a true impact on curbing this problem? Well, you know, I think it's a very difficult question to answer. Uh, we don't have, I think, the silver bullet to solve this problem and it's going to be a lot of different efforts and I think a big part of it will be looking at data to see, you know, with different efforts, what has been worked, what has not worked. And I think beyond the you know, direct cost of the opioid crisis, hopefully some of that funds will be attributed or will be directed towards these indirect costs like foster care where there's a lot of, a lot of suffering going on that these children just have no um, part of. Yeah, I mean, to, to, to me, you know, of a, of a State of the Union filled with memorable moments, that was certainly one of the most memorable, Troy. Overall, though, uh, fixing this problem, uh, you know, the, you can't fix it just throwing money at it, can you? Or what, what would be involved in really trying to get rid of this scourge or, or mitigate this scourge? Well, you know, you're definitely right. It's not a matter of only money. And, you know, I think states are trying to take different actions to improve the situation. You know, Florida, where I'm at, you know, we've instituted a prescription drug monitoring program, which is trying to help decrease the number of prescriptions. But unfortunately, it was an unintended consequence now where there's across the country, while prescription rates are going down, illicit opioid use is increasing. Right. And so, you know, if we're putting a finger in one hole in the dam, but another hole is increasing. And so it's something that we really need to take a holistic approach and try to think of all the different ramifications of the policies. Real quick before we go, uh, Jeremy, people always ask when I have these sort of uh, segments, what could they do? What can the average person do out there? I mean, you're running an organization that's doing good deeds. How can the average person help? So there are a couple of things you can do. Go to our website, fosteringchamps.org. Sign up to take a pledge. If you have time, become a foster parent. If you don't have time, thank a foster parent because foster parents are key to this. And if you're a corporate leader, get involved. Uh, be a, an adoption-friendly, right. foster-friendly organization because when we take kids away from families, we need to give them families and not institutions. Right. And certainly not and Charles, a big program. Uh, yeah, real quick. Yeah, I'm sorry, sorry Troy. Quickly, please. Yeah, so I, actually, I'm a foster parent myself. And, you know, we think getting the word out for the need of foster parents is so important. You know, we get continual calls for right. additional kids coming to our house. So Gentlemen, thank you important. both for everything that you're doing. Uh, and uh, this is certainly a scourge. We appreciate your expertise and both of you, the efforts you're making. Thanks for coming on tonight.